I'm sure a few people have already heard about this story. I don't really see too many videos talking about what happened to Ben Reams. Reams, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. But I guess it's happening so regularly that people don't talk about it as much. You know, I've seen quite a few videos where uh, alleged white people uh, call the police on black people for no reason. And I say alleged because a lot of times you'd be surprised at the number of times that black people call police on black people and remain hidden like they do on YouTube under troll accounts. And a lot of times you may think they're white people doing it and it's your own people doing it. Okay, so I would not doubt and I've seen uh, situations where uh, police was called on certain black people in a certain neighborhood and then when they approached this person it happened to be a black female but in most cases I've noticed it's white women or white females that's calling the police on black men right so this is what happened to Ben Ving Reims okay now before I start this video I just want to say quickly that I completely understand there's a lot of people that's out there that's got YouTube channels, that's got sites, that's trying to pursue their rap career or acting career, or what have you. And they see a video that's doing quite well and they start posting links, advertising, uh, whatever it is that they're doing. Okay. I guess in your own way, that's cool. Okay. But my thought is like this. If you don't normally support this channel, if you're always bucking against me, you know what? Even people that buck against me and disagree, I don't mind people disagreeing with me, okay? Because I personally don't like yes people. I don't like people that's always constantly, yes, 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 I agree with you, I agree with you, you're telling the truth, and then knifing you behind your back. I don't have respect for those kind of people. I respect people that's upfront and honest not people that's disrespectful. They really don't have anything to contribute. They're just disrespectful, okay? Those people I usually block and delete. Now, the way I have my YouTube channel set up, I have it set up to block links, okay? So links, I have to approve those, okay? And I've noticed that there's a lot of people that like to post you know, videos to their channel, trying to promote their channel or trying to promote their video or they're trying to rap or whatever it is, they, or they would try to promote somebody else's channel, right? I guess that's cool, but my thing is like this. If you want to advertise on my channel, if you want to advertise on my videos, you're going to have to pay me, all right? Or click on that PayPal link and donate to my channel. Okay, because a lot of y'all want to advertise. You want free advertisement on somebody else's page or channel, but you don't want to donate your funds to help their channel. Now, I have YouTube channels. I have the WordPress page that's got a donate, li uh, donate link, and I really appreciate and I'm thankful for the people that have donated um, to my channel, either through the PayPal link or through uh, Patreon, okay? And I happened to sign on the Patreon and noticed there were like, you know, two uh, donations there, okay? One was like maybe a few months ago and I really appreciate that person that donated to the channel. I appreciate that, okay? But again, if you want to donate, if you want to advertise on somebody's channel, not just mine, if they have a donation button Click on that and donate some money to that person's channel since you want to advertise to that person's channel. See, and see, that's why black people, and this is off my topic, but that's why black people have a bad rap, man. That's why black people, you know, think really negative of black people. People think negative of black people because it appears that blacks always want something free. They don't want to have to pay their way, right? You want to advertise on somebody's channel. You want to advertise your channel. And then when I check out the person's channel, they may get like maybe 
three views for per video right but you want to advertise on my channel and at the same time talk trash to me right well you need to pay me uh, a workman is worthy of his hire you need to pay me all right and either you pay me for advertising or you click on that donate button and you donate to my channel and then I'm not gonna say you could post every link that you want to but at the same time it's like you know you can't expect somebody to do something for you and you refuse to do something for them all right you know you scratch my back I scratch yours you know so anyway back to the topic Police held Ving Rains at gunpoint in his own home after a neighbor told 911 a large black man had broken in. Now, back when I was coming up, it was a big black man. I was at one time referred to as a big black man. Like when you work on certain companies and they and white people describe you, they describe you as uh, he's a big black man, you know, and he's wearing this and but he's a big black man. I can't just be, you know, who I am. They just can't give my height or try to guess my height. They have to refer to me as a big black man, okay, because of my size, right? And I know it's hard for people to see when I'm on video. Some people may think I'm fat because they only see uh, my shoulders up, right? But then when they see me in person, it's a completely, totally different reaction, all right? So, you know, you got white people that's, especially white females that's being grimy now and on the sly calling the police on brothers and then you have a lot of black people that's calling the police on black people and hiding pretending to be white right so this is Vin Rames if you guys don't know who he is Vin Rames famous face might have saved his life during an interview with the Clay Kane show, Rames revealed a police officer pointed a gun at him as he stood on his doorstep in Santa Monica, California. The confessions came after Kane asked the, uh, the Mission Impossible star about his experiences in racism. I'm sure you hear about all of the reports of black men being attacked by police, Kane asked Rames. You are a big star. But how does racism show itself in your life? Rames answered proves despite, a, despite his stardom, he still deals with the reality of being a black man in America. This happened this year in my house. It was around 2.15 p.m. in the afternoon, Rames said. I have a screen door and then I have a wooden door. I'm in my house. I'm in a pair of basketball shorts only. I have two English bulldog puppies. I hear a noise in my backyard, but I'm thinking the puppies are just running around. And then I get a knock on the door, on the front door. When he opened the door, Rames says he was staring down the barrel of a nine millimeter handgun. Now, Police out there, because of the fact, because of the increase of the number of police calls on black men, police should be trained or alerted to the fact that this could just be a fluke. And I completely understand that police, when they get a call, they respond according to the call they get. Okay, but because of the fact that there's an increase of white people and even black people calling the police on black people saying that there's something suspicious going on at this house well you should handle that quite differently you know go there and say you know listen we got a call all right and we just need to see some id to know that you live here somebody called and we have to check on the call that's our job but to go there and point a firearm in the face of a person that you don't even know if that person lives there. Now, what if a death had occurred from that? Then it would have been like, well, we feared our life. Of what? You had no idea what you were walking into. You just got a phone call and you reacted. So now you got a dead man, that, a man that was killed in his own house or possibly his children because some racist person 
on your street called the police and they responded wrongfully right so police should be trained that when you get calls like that don't be so quick to pull your firearm go there and id the person find out who you're dealing with first find out if that person is truly a burglar or a criminal just don't go there and start pointing and ready to shoot somebody just because he was described as a big black man or a large black man you know so that just proves right there that there's a lot of white dudes out there that fear large black men you fear men so when you say a large black man the first thing pop up in your mind is wow he's strong this is a strong man he's gonna overpower me I am not man enough to handle this strong large big black man he's just too strong so now I have to go with my gun already pulled pointed in your face right so I think police need to be retrained on how to handle situations like that you know to have a gun pointed in your face man in your own house and you're just sitting there chilling right so it says the man with the gun pointed at him a police officer was reported by several other officers was supported not you know he was supported he was supported by several other officers the chief of police and even a police dog even a dog should be fired I opened the door and there was a red dot pointed at my face from a nine millimeter they say put your hands up literally I just walked up and open the door then they said open the front screen door they say do it with one hand so then I have to do it with one hand my hands are up and they have me outside Rames said the the chief of police recognized Rames and had the officers stand down the officers revealed their neighbor called 911 telling the operator a large black man had broken into a home not their home but a home when Rames and the officers visited the person who made the call the person or that person denied it now I think that they should start doing that I think that what police should start doing is like whenever somebody put a call out like that and they check it out and find out it was a flukes that person should be arrested that should, that person right there should be arrested for making false claims you know and it's a good thing and it and it really happens because somebody can call the police on you and you say who did it the police nine times out of ten won't tell you who did it so this person is still looking out their window they call the police on you and they're sitting back peeking out the window looking at the police at your house harassing you got you at gunpoint and they just sitting back enjoying the scene and may even have a video camera recording it right so police should start taking the victim because Vin Rames was a victim take that victim to the person's house that made the call and say look we had we received the call from this house all right this is the number that showed up in 911 this is the address so what's going on what's up why did you call the police on this man you know and let them now this person denied it now they didn't show they didn't say if this person was black or white male or female right and they always hide that person's identity they should start revealing people that make phone calls like that they should start shining the light on these people man expose these people and that would encourage other people or discourage other people from doing the same thing but if the person can make false calls like that and then they're able to hide their identity and not be confronted that's going to encourage more people to do the same thing because the last person got away with it so now we're starting to see more black people more black men having the police called on them but it all goes back to what I talked about that race war when I said that you guys have no idea 
for those of you who's who, who's vouching and calling for a race war and you're calling white people out and you're making these videos and you're talking about Black Lives Matter and black power and power to the people and I hate white people, I hate Donald Trump, I hate this and these white supremacists, this and white supremacists. You're the ones that's calling for this, call, calling for this to happen. And you don't know how it's going to come. This is all a part of race war. And I said that you don't know what you're asking for. It could come in any form. It's not just about getting out there with chains and knives and guns and fighting skinheads. It's not about that. It could also be comprised of your neighbors. The ones that you see every day, the one that you, ra you wave at because you want to fit in to that white neighborhood. You're like one of the only black people living in that white neighborhood. So when you come out, you see your white neighbors, hello. You want to make sure that you say hello to them and they wave back at you. Them same white neighbors could be calling the police on you. They know who you are and they see you coming in and out of your house. Let me share uh, something that happened to me when I first moved on my street, right? When I first moved here, there was only one other black family that lived on this street. And he thought he was white, right? And he's dark. He's darker than me, but he thought he was white. So you know, he was real cool, man. I mean, I thought he was cool, man. We talk and everything, and I knew him. I knew him from a previous job I used to work when I worked at Digital Equipment Corporation. And I think at the time he worked for either Xerox. I think he worked for Xerox, and he used to come to Digital and uh, fix the the copy machines, you know, because he was an engineer, right? A technician. So he used to come there and fix it. And then that's how I knew him and he knew me. And so when I moved on the street, it's like, you never know who's watching you on your own street. Don't matter if they're black or white. So one day I was going back and forth because I was out of work because of a back injury. And I was going back and forth uh, to different distributors getting stuff from my store. So I come back, I load up my van, um, you know, I take the stuff from the car to my van and all this other kind of good stuff, right? Anyway, um, one night he comes up to me, he walks down the street and he says to me, what's all this activity going on at your house in a joking way? But I knew he meant what he said. Now, he was talking to some of, some of the other white people on the street, see? And because of the fact that he was black, I hate using the term black, because of the fact that he was melanated, you know, they used him as the token, the messenger, to come down to find out what's going on. Well, you're the same color he is, so maybe you might be able to talk to him and find out what's going on in his house. Because I'm always getting shipments at my house, you know, trucks pulling up, you know, dropping off new furniture you know, things like that. So they're sitting by watching that. They see me at home during the daytime. They didn't know that I had, well, actually, Kenny did know his name is Kenny. He did know I had a business. He knew I was self-employed, right? He knew when I left digital, uh, digital I was self-employed. And so he knew I had a business, right? But to make, to make a scene for the white people, he came down to my house talking about me and my brother was loading up the van and he come down telling me what's all this activity going on at your house. So I looked at him and I said, yo, man, check this out. I got a lot. I got some strong, some nice weed, man. I got some good drugs here, man. You should have seen the expression of this dude's face. And then when he realized I was clowning him, then he going to let off the stupid laugh. <laughs> oh, you so crazy, man. Right? But it's like, how you going to come down here and question me about what's going on in my house, man? You know, but that just goes to show that even black people could call the police on black people. Now, what if, you know, they were like people are now and just call the police. And next thing you know, the police coming up at my door. You know, what's all this activity going on at your house? What activity? I'm just loading up my van, preparing for the next day. Right. So you never know who's watching you. You never know who's watching you. A lot of times, you know, 
you know, we see videos like this where, where white people call the police on little kids, black kids and, and stuff. And we quickly say these white supremacy, white races. But a lot of time, it's our own people doing it. It's black people doing it. And they stand hidden behind their house, just like people do behind these ghost computer screens. You know? So I got a threat last week from this one dude talking about what he'd do if he saw me. Right. And I just kind of pulled his information. I used to be a hacker, so I still got some skills. I pulled and I respond back to him to let him know, like, look, I'm in Cali sometimes. I'm always in Cali. I got a lot of family in Cali. Right. And I didn't hear anything else from him. Right. But he I guess he felt he was safe behind the computer screen. Right. So you got you got to, you know, you'd be surprised at who's who's watching you in your own neighborhood. You know what I mean? And then it says, uh, when Rames, when Rames and the officers visited the person who made the call, that person denied it. Rames knows he's, what? Rames knows he was lucky, but the situation made him worry about his son. My problem is, as I said to this, as I said this to them, what if it was my son and he had a video game remote or something, and you thought it was a gun, Rames asked. Rames isn't the first public figure who have a frightening run in with police. In May, NBA star Sterling Brown was seen being brutalized by police in a parking lot. The officer later joked about the incident on Facebook. All right, so, you got racist cops in positions of authority. You got racist neighborhoods. And they communicate maybe on a, on a completely different level. They don't know each other. But that spirit knows its own. Right? So they're communicating on a completely, totally different level. And you get a racist neighbor, call the police on a black man, and then a racist cop show up and react like they did with Ben Rames. Right now, they say that the two cops, the the cops that showed up, one was black, and I guess two was biracial, or something like that. Right, but you got a lot of racist black people out there against blacks. So just because a black police officer come to your house, that don't mean he's on your side, because y'all both share the same melanin. You know, it don't mean that they're on your side, right? So. When it comes to like black power and black lives matter, listen, there is no black unity. Maybe on a small scale, but like y'all want to pretend it is, there's no black unity because black people are more threatening to black people than white races are, right? Because the most of the racism I hear that's coming is coming from black people. And they didn't show who this neighbor was. And Ben Rames knew who the person was because they went to this person's house. And of course, like the coward that they are, they denied it. And that's how it is with a lot of trolls on YouTube, right? So that's my take on it. It's unfortunate. This is all a part of that race war, man. You know, a race war that a lot of people uh, want to pretend don't exist. All right, so... Feedback, tell me what you think. Here's the donate button for all of you people out there that keep trying to promote your YouTube channels and post links on my videos. Click on this 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 link right here. You know, so, you know, support the channel. Until next time. I'm fearless.